Welcome to Project Give Back Connects, an extension of Project Give Back in the classrooms, dedicated to inspiring young students to become empathetic, understanding, and community-minded leaders. Project Give Back Connects offers a dose of inspiration and thoughts for discussion. Each live episode is taped and shared with classroom teachers and their students. Sit back, get cozy, let's get connected. Hello everyone and welcome to Project Give Back Season 3, Episode 3. It's so nice to see you. Honestly, I'm a little nervous about tonight's show because most episodes, I know all the guests personally. I've known them for years and they're always people I admire and respect and people I really want you to meet. Well, tonight, two of our guests I've admired and respected, but from afar, I've never met them until today, until this recording. So I'm a little starstruck, to be perfectly honest. I'm just so impressed with who they are and what they've accomplished. You know, they've experienced challenges, they've risen above those challenges, and they're creating impact in making our world a brighter, better place. First up, I'm going to introduce you to Audrey Goof. She, I first heard Audrey on a podcast called Finding Your Bliss with Judy Liebrack. If you haven't heard that podcast, check it out. It's amazing. She's such a good interviewer. But after listening to Audrey, I just knew we had to meet her. She founded the Nanny Angel Network. She's a mother, she's an entrepreneur, and she saw a huge gap, and she's actually filling that gap. She's going to tell you all about it. I can sit and tell you about her, but I know she's going to do it best. One thing I will tell you is she's earned many awards. She's been named a L'Oreal Paris Woman of Worth and a CNN hero. She's amazing, and she's here with us today. Welcome, Audrey Guth. Thank you, Ellen. Wow, what an introduction. Well, I've changed my approach a little bit tonight. I want to tell you a story, and I hope through this story you'll learn some important life lessons, because it certainly taught me a lot of lessons. I'd like to tell you about a little girl I know quite well. When she was nine years old, her father became very ill. She found out that her dad had cancer when she overheard two teachers talking about her dad in the hallway. Her parents never discussed the fact that her dad had cancer. You see, they thought it was better to keep a secret. They thought they were protecting her from the really hard stuff. But you all know, kids, even at nine, are really, really intuitive and know what's going on. But she knew it was better not to ask questions because she thought it would really upset her parents. When her dad had to go for many treatments and hospitalizations, she was tasked with taking care of her three younger siblings. She had to grow up really, really fast. And she also had to miss her school plays and rehearsals and other activities simply because no one was available to take her to these places. This made her quite sad and frustrated. And nothing in her life was normal after her dad was diagnosed with cancer. When she was 12, her dad died. And it was over. Everyone was sad, but no one talked about it. She thought it would upset her mom if she asked questions. So it was like, we're getting back to normal now, just like that. And just like that, her life was, was going to be exactly the same as before, except that it wasn't. And nothing was normal because now she was the kid that didn't have that dad. And her friends didn't know what to say or how to act around her. And it was so awkward. And she became very lonely and very isolated. So just in case you haven't figured it out yet, I was that kid. 
And I wish I could tell you that things have changed for kids today who have a parent with cancer, but not really much has changed at all. No one is comfortable talking about what's happening when, a, when someone has cancer, especially when it's a parent. And so they just don't talk. So how can we change things up for these kids? We can give them a chance to share their feelings in a safe environment and with caring people who really listen, who are trained and, and know the words to say. And we can answer questions that every kid whose parent has cancer has. Like, is my dad gonna die? Can I catch cancer? Who's gonna take care of me? And can I cure it? Those are questions I promise you every single kid has. And even very, very young kids have something called magical thinking. And if we don't answer these questions, they make up stories in their head that are much worse than reality. So if we don't answer these questions, if we don't give kids a chance to grieve, to, to have all of these difficult feelings come out and be able to express them in a healthy way, um, they're going to grow up with serious psychological and emotional problems. In fact, kids who aren't allowed to grieve or given the opportunity to grieve in an age appropriate way have a 50% higher incidence of emotional and psychological issues, drug abuse, criminal activity, self-harming. I could go on and on and on. 90% of people in prisons have unresolved grief issues. They've never been allowed to talk about it or share their feelings. So by giving kids the support they need to get through the most difficult time in their lives, we could change outcomes for so many. So here's where you come in. How do you support a friend? who's got a parent who has cancer or who has died. You know what, it is so easy. You just be there. Don't ghost them because you're uncomfortable and you don't know what to say. Just be there. Don't give advice because you don't know what's going on really behind the scenes and, and just practice being a good listener. I think that's the hardest thing. I, I have to bite my tongue and shut up. And that's what you have to practice because you have to give people a chance to talk without having judgment. Um, and now never say you know how you feel because trust me, you don't. So that's what Nankind does. We've just rebranded as Nankind from Nanny Angel Network. And we send very specially trained volunteers into people's homes to be able to support kids through this time. And for a year after a parent dies, we have a homework club. We have a fun in a box program virtually. So when you turn 16, if you're interested in volunteering, we will really welcome you to join us on this journey of really changing lives one kid at a time. So the next time you have an opportunity to support a friend who's going through the very difficult time of losing a parent to cancer or who has cancer, just being there means more than you will ever know. And that's my story. Wow. Audrey, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story. And I can't believe that kid was you. That just must have been so devastating. Um, I know what it feels to lose a loved one. You know, our, our, our son passed away and uh, we did have the luxury of grieving together. And in our house, we called that puddle jumping. And when one of us fell into a puddle, we were there to just grab each other. And it's really important to have that kind of network. And thank you so much for what you do. You're so welcome. And thank you for this opportunity. And I hope if you, if the kids who are listening, remember one thing, it's just to be there and just learn how to listen. It's so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks so much. So. Next up, we have a mother-daughter team. They are such a dynamic duo, and they are Sophia and Nicole. Together, they make up the Super Sophia Project. They're here to share their story, what a story it is, 
Um, Sophia's message is so sweet. It's be kind to each other and spread love. It's a simple message with a powerful punch. And we at Project Give Back, Sophia, we share that message with you. We are so honored to have you here and to talk about your journey, or actually, as it could be called, your movement that you've started. Welcome to Project Give Back Connects. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. So my name is Sophia, but most people know me as Super Sophia. When I was two years old, I was diagnosed with leukemia and I spent a lot of time in the hospital. So one time when I was at the hospital, a kind custodian gifted me with a pack of stickers. It made me so happy and brought me so much joy. After that, it inspired my family to create love boxes and love boxes are boxes filled with toys, crafts, books, and so many fun things that can keep a child in the hospital busy, entertained, and know that someone cares about them. And that's really my biggest message because it's really hard to be in the hospital and knowing that someone cares about you and wants to send you a box to try to cheer you up a bit is a really great thing. Exactly. And um, these love boxes, the first year we started in 2016, we had a goal of gifting 100 boxes to um, her satellite hospital. And we ended up doing 1000 that year. And then throughout the year, it's just the community got involved. Um, people would pick up a box, they get to fill it. It's a great way to teach your children how to give back and help other kids who are in need. And to date, we have gifted over 30,000 love boxes, which is, is, is a true blessing. And um, listening to, to your other speaker really touches home because in 2019, um, my husband, Sophia's dad passed away from cancer. So it was one of those things where it was like, maybe we're just, we're not, we're not gonna do this anymore, but um, her dad was a big part. He was the project. So we decided to continue in his honor. And through our grief, what helps us to heal is, um, is just giving love and kindness to other people. So we know firsthand what it's like to go through that. And it's so wonderful to have people care about you, um, show you love, especially um, during such a difficult time. So you two are so phenomenal. Just yeah. amazing. So, so I, ha I have to tell you something. So I knew that you guys were going to be coming on and I've been following them. You have to follow their, their Instagram. It's so inspiring. So I've been following you for a while now. And I called some very close friends that we have at Spin Master Toys. And today something was dropped off at my house for you. So right behind me, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see? There are... Can you see that? There are a whole bunch of Rubik's cubes for you to stick into your boxes. Oh, nice. And we will be dropping those off to you this week. And uh, it's a little thing that we can do, but hopefully we can bring you more and more. Oh, um, wonderful. Tell, Thank us, you. tell us what types of things you need for your love boxes. Um, right now, we're in need for um, our teen boxes. So we do boxes from NICU all the way up to teens. And um, we like to include toothbrush, toothpaste. So we know sometimes you get admitted into the hospital and you have nothing on you. So just like the basic essentials are perfect. Everyone, I remember when we were hospitalized with Sophia, I would have given anything to brush my teeth after you're there for days. So just like a toothbrush, toothpaste, even a, a comfy pair of socks. We'll put in like a book, word search, um, coloring books. You know what, just things, little activities. Again, we always say it's not the toys and, and the items, it's the love. Knowing that, wow, somebody cares about me, someone who doesn't know me, it, it, it's just, it's really wonderful. So we just fill it, we fill it with love, just a whole bunch. The, the Rubik's Cubes are wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Spending so much time being bored. It's like such a wonderful thing to be able to do. Thank you too for being here. I know how busy you are. Their drive is just coming up uh, on Saturday. They have a big Christmas drive. So thank you for taking the time today to be with 
to be here with us. And um, I just hope your initiative grows and grows and grows. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being so inspiring. So we always on Project Give Back Connects, we always have a young, talented performer. Well, today, one of my favorite people is back with us today. And I would like to introduce you to our friend, Jules Halpern. She has been writing music and singing for years, years and years, and yet she's only 16 years old. I mean, when she was 12, she sang the national anthem at Madison Square Garden. She just has a massive heart and an even more massive voice and talent. And she's continually giving that talent away. She often sings at our Sunday jams, which we have every Sunday at 4 p.m. And she's here. I'm so excited for you to meet her. Jules, welcome to Project Give Back Connects. Thank you for having me again. Um, those were beautiful stories and yeah, seriously. Uh, I'm going to sing a song called Wonderful by Leanne Le Havis. And yeah. Did the work get a little bit colder? Not quite, just a little bit older. So slow that the bound fall over. Over. This heart grow a little bit harder. Too much, too late, too much. Wasn't it kind of wonderful? Wasn't it kind of wonderful, baby? Wasn't it kind of wonderful? Wonderful. You can trip, make a switch, make a take, break the circuit between us. But the electricity lingers in our fingers. Oh, you can burn every fuse and leaves, turn the positive minus. The electricity lingers in our fingers. From you, there's nothing but horizon. Need dark, I'm searching for sunlight. Remember when you put the stars into my eyes? Oh. Wasn't it kind of wonderful? Wasn't it kind of wonderful, baby? Wasn't it kind of wonderful, wonderful? You can drift, make a switch, make a thing, break the circuit between us. The electricity lingers. In our fingers, oh, you can burn every fuse and rings, turn it positive, my nerves. But the electricity lingers in our fingers. Was it kind of wonderful? Was it kind of wonderful, baby? Was it kind of wonderful, wonderful? Jules, I think you're kind of wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here, Jules. Thanks for having me. What a gift. What a gift. And now it's time for Kindness Corner with Lindsay at one to give. Hi, Lindsay. This week, a lot of data came out about food banks in Canada and the city of Toronto. One thing emerged that was clear. 
the need has never been more high. The amount of first-time food bank users has increased and the general amount of visits to food banks have increased. At one to give we're challenging you to make a donation of some non-perishable food. You can drop this at any fire station. There are also little pantries set up all over the city. Holy Blossom Temple just put a new one up and we see that it's been empty for a while. We ask you to think of items that you think could go in a kid's lunch, items that are high in protein, and that are filling. Together, if we all give a little, we can make a big difference. And as always, kindness is contagious. So everyone, I want to thank you all for being here today. To our guests, thank you for sharing your inspirational stories. As always, my message to you is let's be kind to one another. Let's embrace one another. Let's learn from one another. And we'll see you soon. Mwah. Open your heart today.